Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Brittany. Today's video is going to be a fun experiment. Now, for some reason, just lately, I've been getting a lot of questions on this video all about how to color cocoa butter on whether or not you can use liquid food colors. Because so many people have been asking that question, I figured I would just make a video on it and explain things a little bit better and also do an experiment where I test some colors out. So what I'm going to do is grab all the different types of food colors I have laying around in my pantry and mix them with cocoa butter and see what happens. Oftentimes, if I don't fully understand something or if I just am curious and want to see what happens or try something out for myself, I will do a little experiment. So if you guys ever have an idea that you are having a hard time finding the answer to, go ahead and experiment and try it out yourself. Don't be afraid to test something out and have it fail. In fact, a lot of times learning the lesson of what not to do will stick into our brains a lot longer <laughs> than if everything goes smoothly all the time. Now, I think I have a pretty good idea of which food colors are going to work well and which ones aren't. I know in theory why some of them shouldn't work, but it'll be interesting to see how the colors interact with the cocoa butter and what actually happens when you use them. This video is for those of you who not only want to understand why we do certain things, but also see it with your own eyes. So let's get mixing. Here are the food colors that I'll be using. First up will be the classic grocery store food dye by McCormick in neon pink. Second, we'll try an Americolor gel paste in the color turquoise. Third will be our color mill liquid in the color navy. Fourth, we'll try a Loran powder in the color violet. And then last, I'll show you our classic Roxy and Rich powder color in brilliant blue. This little guy probably looks familiar to most of you. This is the classic food dye that you'll find at the grocery store. This is a neon pink color from the McCormick neon box that I've had lying in my pantry for a couple of years. Now, what are your first thoughts when you think about using this dye with the cocoa butter? Well, mine is that it's water-based and water and fat don't mix well. Um, and cocoa butter is pure fat. So I'm thinking this one isn't going to work, right? But I am excited to see exactly what happens um, because I haven't ever tried it before. Also, not only do water and fat not mix, um, water, as you know, messes with the tempering of chocolate or cocoa butter. So I'm wondering if the water in this will affect the temper of the cocoa butter. Maybe it won't temper or it will have some bloom. It'll be interesting to see. I'm really not even sure how it's going to look when we try to mix them together. So let's do it. Okay, so this cocoa butter is like 42 degrees Celsius and I've got the first color. This is going to be so weird to mix these two together. I'm going to start with like three drops. Whoops. <laughs> I didn't mean to drop it on the... Yeah, look at this. I mean, this is pretty much what I expected. I had just never tried it before because why would I, right? I'm still going to temper it and do a sample because I think it'll be fun to try um, just to see what happens. I mean, they're separate, so um, yeah. And this is because this is water-based just for science. I'm going to get the milk frother and I'm going to mix them with that. My guess is it's just going to break the uh, little water drops into smaller bits rather than mix, but it'll be better for spreading. Okay, that's crazy. So I thought it would like break it into smaller droplets, but it broke it into a lot, lot smaller droplets <laughs> to the point where it actually looks like it mixed. This is fun and 
unexpected. So I need to grab my thermometer. Let's wipe this up before it stains. Have to get some soap on that. Um, so it's about 28.8 degrees Celsius. So we have like a degree and a half to go until I can warm it back up and it will be tempered. This is so interesting. I'm glad I mixed it with the milk frother because this is definitely going to give a more interesting result. Okay, it's cool enough now. I'm going to warm it up to working temp, just a couple degrees. Okay, so now I have an acetate sheet over top of just a piece of paper so you can see the colors better. I'm going to do some color with a paintbrush. to see how it looks. And then some with my finger. Okay, and now that I'm spreading it, I can actually see the, the larger droplets of um, the food dye, but they're still um, pretty small, so. It'll be interesting to see how it looks on top of the chocolate. I'm going to cover this with white chocolate when we're done sampling all the colors. We'll do just like some dots. It'll be a bit thicker. And we'll see how this sets up. It should only take a minute or so and it may or may not set up properly because water should, well, predictably, I think that the water should affect the temper of the cocoa butter, but we'll see. So check this out. You can see that the cocoa butter here has gotten dull. That means it is setting up, which is a little surprising. Um, it might not be fully in temper because of the water, but it did set up. And it's been maybe like five minutes, so that's interesting to me. So next up is this gel food color by AmeriColor in the color turquoise. I'm curious about this one because it's thicker than the previous one, but it's still water-based. So the first ingredient is water, sugar, and then the dyes. And it also has some gums in it, cornstarch. So yeah, this will be interesting. These gel food colors are what I usually use when I make modeling chocolate and they work amazing with modeling chocolate. But of course, modeling chocolate is different than cocoa butter, but <laughs> so yeah, let's see what happens. I'm going to, I'm going to start with just one drop because that pink was pretty uh, saturated, so. It probably doesn't need very much for this small amount of cocoa butter. Um, each of these cocoa butters are um, just 10 grams because I didn't want to waste it. So I did a small amount. So similar to the pink, it's in little droplets like this, but I have the frother again, which will help us mix it. pretty interesting to me you can tell like I feel like you can tell these are water-based because they look watery right like that color doesn't come out true like it would if you put it in frosting and I know that the cocoa butter has a slight yellow color so this isn't going to look like the color on the lid of course because it's mixing a little bit with yellow but it's like the colors look watery, yet they're pretty dark. Like it's darker than, than it's supposed to be. If I added more, it would only get darker, but it wouldn't, I still just feel like it would have this like watery look to it. I don't know how to describe it. Um, and that's probably just because it's not pure color. Like the powders, um, they're pure color. Now this color's tempered, so I'm just going to do the same thing. Paint a little sample. 
Oh, wow. This one's super clear. I guess I could have put more color. And if you look close, again, you can see the little tiny dye droplets. And just because I want to, <laughs> I'm gonna try one more thing. <laughs> I think it'll be interesting. So I'm going to put a little extra cocoa butter. I'm going to get a little bit more. <laughs> I just wanna see what happens if the droplets are bigger when we lay the chocolate over top, just for fun. Hmm, so this one looks like it's not setting up. It's been probably five minutes. It's getting tacky. Um, and I tempered it just the same as the other one and it could just be taking a little longer. Um, I'm sure it'll set up. So next up is another liquid food coloring, and this one is by the brand Color Mill in the color Navy. Now this is an oil-based coloring. Now I feel like this is going to be a, an important part of the experiment because I feel like when people are asking if they can use liquid food colors, I'm assuming they're meaning oil-based or fat-based colors like this one. So I've had a couple people mention a problem they've run into when shelling their bonbons after decorating their mold with cocoa butter. And I've never run into this problem myself. Um, they said that the cocoa butter sets up, everything looks fine. And then when they go to shell the chocolates, the cocoa butter runs, which means it's melting or it's out of temper assuming the chocolate isn't too hot and it, you're using it at working temperature, your cocoa butter should never break down and run <laughs> after that. And what I've wondered is if you're using a liquid color that contains oil, you're, you know, depending on how much you add, you're adding more liquid into your cocoa butter. So it's going to mess with the texture. So I'm wondering if that might be the cause of this problem for some people. So we'll see how this interacts with the cocoa butter. Um, my guess is it's going to blend well and it's going to look good, but I'm wondering if the melting point is going to be a little lower because of the added uh, fluids, which is in this case, oils. Well glycerol and lecithin. <laughs> also just quickly want to mention with this one, this brand, it's not specifically made for cocoa butters and chocolate work, but it is made for products that are high in fat, like frosting, cakes, and chocolate. So it does mention chocolate on the website, but it's not made for cocoa butter and bonbon making. So just keep that in mind. So with any liquid food coloring, just keep in mind that if it contains oils, you're adding those oils into your cocoa butter. And if you add oil into your cocoa butter, it can't possibly stay as firm, right? And with this one, I'm going to start with less. Well, I'll start with one drop. And then for my samples, see, look how it blends better just by stirring it. Because this one's oil, so it's blend, actually blending with the cocoa butter. Um, anyway, I was saying with this one, I was going to start with less, just one drop, and then um, just keep adding more and more and take a sample of each one to try to get that navy color 
color because if you're wanting to use liquid colors for cocoa butter, you're probably wanting the color it's labeled as. So I wanna see if we can actually get navy with the liquid color without affecting the texture of the cocoa butter. So that's the experiment kind of for this one. Also mixing with this for good measure. Here's what it looks with just one drop, 10 grams of cocoa butter. All right, it looks like the turquoise is set up now. And time to sample the navy. See, it looks pretty dark in here, but as soon as you get it laid out, it's not that dark. I'm going to add more. I'm just going to go straight for two drops. Sample it again. So this is three drops total. for 10 grams of cocoa butter. Now, of course, depending on how thick, um, it'll be darker. So this is thicker there in the middle. I should do a dot too, which is pretty thick, but you wouldn't want <laughs> your shell to be that thick. I'm going to add two more drops because I want to experiment with how much we're able to add. Now it's getting pretty dark, which is great. So this is five drops total for the navy in 10 grams of cocoa butter. And really, that's a pretty decent coat. If I do it thinner, it looks like this. So we'll do that too. You can see the color even when it's thinner is more saturated. So that's more true to what it's meant to look like uh, as far as amounts go. Clearly this one's not enough and this one looks more where it's supposed to be. So this is one, three, five. I'm going to do two more drops just to see because we're experimenting. Now that, even with the thin coat, looks like navy. So I feel like we've finally reached the actual color. So this is seven drops of color for 10 grams of cocoa butter. Okay, great. So this next food color is a classic in my kitchen. When I first started cake decorating, I used to use these powdered food colors with lemon extract to mix paints and paint fondant with. Little did I know at the time that these Loran food color powders are created to blend well with fat-based products. So my guess is that this powder, even though it's a different brand than like the classic Roxy and Rich, I'm assuming it's going to work very similarly and do a decent job. Now I can't find anywhere on the website where these advertise as fat soluble or dispersible, but it does say on the website, used in chocolates, dry mixes, and many other applications where water is prohibited. So for this one, I weighed out one gram of powder. The rule is usually 10% of the cocoa butter in color. So the cocoa butter is 10 grams, so I'm going to add one gram. Well, I weighed out one gram, but I'm going to add half because I've never used this before with cocoa butter. So yeah, I don't want it to be too dark and that looks pretty dark. So, so right now it's a half a gram. So that's 5% and 10% is just a general rule. It doesn't mean you have to add 10%. 
you can add more or less. And I just remembered, realized that I forgot, I should have sifted the powder in. It would make it easier to mix and easier to, yeah, blend together, but I didn't do that, but it should still be all right. Oops. <laughs> So this one, I can still see little bits of powder, which might be my fault for not mixing it with an immersion blender or because I didn't sift it. Um, or honestly, it could be the powder. So not sure. This is not usually the brand I use for chocolate. Our last color is a fat dispersible food colorant by Roxy and Rich in the color Brilliant Blue. Now this brand is well known for its powdered colors and used by many chocolatiers for coloring cocoa butter. I've personally used it many times and it works great. So this portion of the video is less of an experiment and more of a demonstration and refresher on how to color cocoa butter and temper it using powdered colors. So for this blue powder, this time I just wanna use the whole thing and mix it while I'm mixing it. Um, it comes in a five gram container. So I've melted 50 grams of cocoa butter and I'm just going to sift the whole container in and that's 10%. So my cocoa butter is between like 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. Um, you can just warm it between 40 to 45, but if you go a little above, that's fine. Um, you want to sift in your powder color at the top temperature, so while it's still warm. So as soon as you melt it up to 40 to 45 degrees Celsius, you'll add in the powder and stir it. So yeah, I'll just stir it first. Now I'll use the milk frother to blend it a little better. If you're finding that that's just not enough and there's still bits of powder, um, if, if you have enough cocoa butter, you can use an immersion blender, it'll help really get everything blended better because it'll chop up the last little bits. Um, but it's kind of hard to use with such a small quantity of cocoa butter. So if that's the case and it's really bugging, just depends on how bad it is. It looks pretty smooth. I mean, it blends really well, even with the milk frother. I don't think I'll bother, but what you can do is grab another container and just put it through the sieve one more time. So put the powder through to begin with to help break up um, the pieces of powder smaller after you stir and blend with an immersion blender or the milk frother. If you're using a small amount, then you can just sift it one more time into your final container and use it. So um, as a refresher, now that I've got the color mixed and the cocoa butter has hit the top temperature, I'm going to let uh, the cocoa butter cool down to 27 degrees Celsius. Um, occasionally I'll stir it because movement is also part of the tempering process, but you don't have to stir it the whole time. <laughs> you can walk away from it and come back and give it a stir like this every so often. Keep an eye on the temperature. In fact, just so you guys can see, 
right now after adding the color. Mine started at about 50 degrees because I let it go a little long, um, which is fine with cocoa butter. Um, but it was at 50 and now it's at 36.5. So we have about 10 degrees to go. So I'll let this sit for a while and keep stirring it. So I've been periodically stirring this and it is just a little below 27 degrees Celsius, which is what we want. Yep. And so that's the low temperature. And now I just grab the heat gun and I just gently warm it back up to working temperature, which is 28 to 30 degrees Celsius, depending on what you're doing. If you're airbrushing, I heat it up to like 31. Don't go above 32 or you can take it out of temper. So I just run across it and give it a stir. or you can stir while you're heating it. Either way works. And that didn't warm it up that much, so I'm just going to do it again. And there's no need for me to go super high. I'm just going to do like 28, 29. actually got it up to 30, so it's definitely ready. And warming it up is just to work with it, to make it more fluid to work with. So depending on, yeah, the task you're doing, you don't need to go that high, but it's fine. It should be tempered. In my other video where I showed you how to add color, I did a temper test, but we're essentially doing that while we're applying the sample. So I'm going to do that now. Just taking some blue. Oh my gosh. Wow, it looks so nice. Look how smooth it is. Even though I didn't um, put it through the sieve that last time, it still looks really smooth. Um, a lot smoother than this powder. Um, yeah, I mean, Roxy and Rich is like really a well-known brand. Um, and lots of people use it to color their cocoa butters. So I would say, yeah, you're really safe to choose this brand. And the color is so nice and bright. I really like this color. I'll add some with a glove just for a different texture. Um, the thing I like about the powder too is that it's not, like I can feel, I can feel the thickness is better, which is nicer to work with. Like this one did feel a bit thinner. Um, like, see how it doesn't immediately run back together? And all the liquid ones did. This one did too. This one just really didn't mix well, which I'm actually surprised about because it is made for um, chocolate and it doesn't say technically dispersible or soluble, but I, I'm guessing it's a fat dispersible food color powder. But like this one looks super creamy. Like, look how nice it looks. Um, so. Yeah, we'll let these set up. Okay, so all the colors are set up now. And this might be really hard to show, but I'm going to try. Um, I just wanna show some of the textures. Um, because it's kind of weird. <laughs> the water-based ones. I mean, this looks pretty smooth. I'm looking at it up close and I don't see any bloom yet. That could change. Um, so that's the pink one. Um, the turquoise also looks smooth. Like it's firm to the touch. It's definitely set up. Obviously this one's weird with the droplets, not mixed, but that was part of the experiment. Um, it's just really weird how smooth it kind of ended up looking very unexpected then we have this one 
And this one is the one I wish you could see the texture because the cocoa butter is kind of lumpy, like it formed almost like, not balls, but like it's not a smooth texture. It's like kind of lumpy. Like I feel like it was doing some weird separation within itself. Like, so look at how this one like after I swiped it, the color like moved to the middle. Like it moved through the cocoa butter as it was setting up and moved to the middle because it was all evenly spread when I first started. And yeah, the texture is like, I wanna call it lumpy, but like that's not the word I'm looking for. Um, I just can't tell if you can see it. I think you can kind of see it like how it like kind of looks separated over there. I just think that's really weird because this one, even though it's a liquid food color, I still thought it was going to work pretty good because I know people use it. Um, I don't use it because I just, I don't wanna be adding like the extra oils to the cocoa butter, but I know people do use it. Um, anyway, to me, it's a weird texture. Then we have the purple powder, which is not a brand I use. I think my cocoa butter somehow came out of temper because this one, like all of the other ones are set up, but this one is only like kind of set up. And I don't know why, because I tempered it exactly the same as the rest. So not sure about that, but I don't think anyone's like running out to buy that brand <laughs> to dye there cocoa butters. You can do it though. I think I said I've never done it before, but I do remember in a pinch, I ran out of black cocoa butter and I do think I had a jar of black of this powder and I did use it and it worked good. So it can be done. I don't know if I messed up the temper or what, but still not my favorite. And here's the blue from Roxy and Rich. From this angle, I can see more than I could earlier, a couple little dots of powder. Like I said, that can be fixed by running it through the sieve after you mix it. Other than that, it looks good. And yeah, like the texture looks good and it's setting up nice. So that one is totally fine. Anyway, I just wanted to try to show you the textures before I lay over the white Next, I'm going to temper some white chocolate and spread it over the cocoa butter because I want to see how each of the cocoa butters interacts with tempered chocolate. All right, so I have tempered white chocolate and I just realized I should take this acetate down, make it easier to spread. I'm using white because these colors don't have white in them. And so if I used a darker chocolate, it wouldn't show the colors. I'll let this set up just a little and then I'll put it in the fridge to uh, allow the chocolate to contract from the acetate and we'll take a look at what the colors look like on the other side.
All right, well, that was interesting. <laughs> we got some results that I definitely wasn't expecting. Um, I'm still really surprised at the water-based food colors. I just, I at least thought that it was going to like mess with the temper a lot or the, the texture was going to be weird or something. The only real thing that I can notice if, if I just showed, if someone showed these to me without telling me which ones were water-based, I wouldn't know. And the only thing I can tell is that the colors aren't true um, in the water-based food colors. So I want to give some sort of conclusion, like in conclusion, my advice is this. And I knew what my advice was going to be, which is <laughs> stick to fat-based food dyes. And I still believe that the powders are superior um, because I don't like the idea of adding extra liquids into your cocoa butter. Even if it can be done, I don't feel like it should be done. As far as which cocoa butters were best to work with, the Roxy and Rich, seriously, the texture of it when I was like using the brush, it was the best, but that totally makes sense. You're just adding pure dye into your cocoa butter. So in my opinion, I'm recommending that even though all of the colors worked. I'm still not convinced though. I feel like it's a bit of a fluke. Like, I'm like, do I need to try it again and add more of the water-based one to get it to like go out of temper? But that would defeat the point of the experiment, right? So I don't know. Can they work? Yes. Should they work? I don't think so. <laughs> did they work? It looks like they did work. I'm, I keep looking over here at them because I'm just like, yeah, they're sitting here and I'm just like, I'm so surprised by this, especially this just like standard food dye. It's so weird to me. And the color looks so smooth. This one, especially it's compared to the, the turquoise one. It's just so strange. Um, I don't even know what else to say about it. Hopefully this was a fun video. Um, I wouldn't go out and buy water-based food colors or gels and I don't know. In the end, my advice is stick with brands that are made specifically for chocolate work because they're probably going to work the best even if you can get away with using other products. I just don't think they're going to be as good. Personally, I'm going to stick with brands that really are made for cocoa butters specifically. Um, so Roxy and Rich is a great one. There are others out there, but really, to be honest, my favorite are pre-colored cocoa butters. You know exactly what you're getting. You can even mix them, mix different colors together. I do that a lot to make new colors. I just like knowing what I'm getting. And also it saves the hassle of having to mix it yourself. But I guess that's my conclusion because I'm still a little bit just like, what? All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Well, I definitely did. If you liked the video, please like the video and leave me a comment down below. It helps me out a lot. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, today's the day. If you'd like to see something else that's sweet, just click on one of these thumbnails. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you soon. Bye.